the past with Marvel. Um, honestly, I probably know more about uh, the Illuminati from uh, things like uh, the old Gargoyles cartoon series yeah. than anything. Yeah, Although, which was a very classic cartoon series. And so, I mean, and, you know, bits and pieces here that I picked up. You know, like from Angels and Demons. Yeah. You know, it, 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 it'll be interesting how they do a comic on just that. Yeah. Um, Hawkeye, Ant-Man, The Vision, uh, Contest of Champions, Amazing Spider-Man, which has been done a lot of times, so they're redoing it again. Which is starting to seem like a money grab, but that's besides the point. Uh, Carnage, which is going to be exciting to see. Now, the one that really caught both our eyes is Spider Woman. Spider Woman, yes. Uh, if you haven't seen this, they have uh, actually shown the cover for the comic, and it's Spider Man. It, excuse me, Spider Woman is shown very pregnant yes. on the cover of this. Very, very unique choice well, of cover. It, it's yeah, it's absolutely unique. I mean. And it's, and we, you know, as I said, it's very obvious. I mean, you know, a lot of people have been very critical of how women are portrayed in comic books. And, you, but you, you simply look at it, most of these women, you know, kind of have the Barbie doll, you know, figures. Yes. Yeah, most do. And so, so it, it's unique to see a, a visibly pregnant Spider Woman. Kind of curious how they're going to take that route. Uh,. Spider Man uh, as Miles Morales, so his own full comic book. So yeah. it's that, that's a huge step forward. So they're doing more on him than they are on Peter Parker, which well, honestly, I mean, how many you know, how much can you really do to change Peter Parker? They've done yeah. several things. They've done it where uh, you know, you know, Peter Parker and Mary Jane went off to. <laughs> Uh, agree, you know, to save his aunt's life, they went off and agreed with, I think it's Sinestro, I think yeah. his name is, to go off and to have everyone, including each other, forget that they were ever married. And then they fell back in love. Peter Parker, you know, lost a job at the Daily Bugle. And, I mean, they've done so many different things they've had in, you know, I mean, between, you know, like, of course, Venom, they've tried... In you know all the different costume changes, yeah, which actually tying into that, they are saying for the new Spider-Man movie, it will be a never-before-seen villain. So it won't be Sandman, it won't be Venom, it won't be the Green Goblin, who's done been done three times now. Well, it's been well, tech. Okay, well, I mean, technically, we've had it done, you know, once with Norman Osborn, twice with yeah. Harry Osborn, but they still classify that as three. So it's going to be a new villain. They're going to. Tr- from what it sounds like, they're digging deep in the barrel to find one that hasn't been done very much. So it's going to be unique who they pull out. Well, I mean, they have a couple of really good villains that they could probably use. I would like to see Doctor Octopus redone. I think eventually, but I think part of the reason why they're going the direction that they're going is they don't want to be compared to the other five movies. And so, I mean, the options here, I mean, the obvious options to me are there's the Chameleon, there is uh, Mysterio. Mysterio would be unique to see. That would be a really interesting one. Uh, there's the Scorpion. <coughs> another, which, another interesting... Which would be really interesting. I don't know if we'll see the Scorpion right now because uh, this Spider-Man movie is going to be centered around a high school age Spider-Man. Yeah, so and so he probably and if he, he wouldn't have met the Scorpion yet. Well, the thing is, he wouldn't have got his job at the Daily Bugle yet. No, and it was if they do it correctly, it was J. Jonah Jameson who actually had the Scorpion created to try to defeat Spider-Man. Yes, so you know they they got to be careful who they tie in. It, it'll be unique unless they go to a route where they create a new villain. Well, the thing is, when uh, there's so many different villains, I mean, he, Spider-Man probably has got the biggest rogue gallery yeah. that, for them to pick from. I mean, and that's saying something because Batman has quite a few villains as well. Yes, Batman. I think Spider-Man and Batman have the most, which is awesome. Uh, the one that you and I, I think, were both kind of excited for. We've talked about this before. Spider Gwen. 
The Secret History of Spider Man, Spider-Man. Uh, uh, Peter Parker, and Gwen Stacy. Yeah, for those people who don't know, uh, a couple of years ago, they did a series of Spider Man where they had Spider Man's from multiple uh, different uh, universes all come together, and one of them happened to be Spider Gwen. You know, of course, is Gwen Stacy. So, in essence, Gwen Stacy become, gets been by the spider instead of Spider Man, if I re- remember yeah. correctly. Yeah, so. And so they will keep her in her own universe. <coughs> they're not going to bring her to the main universe, and they're just going to keep her in her universe and, you know, follow her exploits there. Yeah. Um, they are actually doing another one involving Spider Gwen. I'm skipping a few comics just to talk about this one since it ties in perfectly. Uh, web Warriors. Yes, Web Warriors. Web Warriors, which... Uh, basically, it's, you know, the Spider-Verse, uh, Spider-Gwen, Spider-Man Noir, Spider-Ham. Spider-Ham. They're bringing back Spider-Ham. Which I think is hilarious, because Spider-Ham actually was a character uh, that they brought out in the mid-1980s. Yeah, no. Which would actually have been before your time. Doesn't matter. But I remember it, it, you know, happened after the original Secret Wars, and so one of his villains in that series was actually a bee, and it was called <laughs> the Bee Onder. So... The classic, classic villains. Classic, classic villains. Uh, yes. Spider-Man India, Spider-UK, and Spider-Girl. I, I think it's very unique that they have not only the different Spider Man, Spider Man, Spider Girls, but ones from other countries too. Oh yeah, it's very it, interesting. It, it's, it's unique. And Spider Girl is actually Spider Man's daughter. Yes. So uh, it's, it, it's definitely unique. It's very unique. Yeah. Uh, they're also doing Silk, which is Sinister Silk. For those who don't know. I'm not really familiar with that. It's not a very familiar comic. I, I really hope they press more into it to make it more familiar. I, it was a good read. Always is. Um, this is obviously the year of Spider-Man. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of going to Spider-Man. Uh, uh, I don't know if you've seen it, but they <laughs> debuted a new costume for Spider-Man, which I did wear, see it. Um, which it has some like blue tinges to Yeah, it's Yeah, very, it's very similar to the old... Old old time uniform, which it's nice to have a throwback to what they used yeah. to, what it used to look like. So definitely looks like they're going back to the roots. And Marvel's obviously playing a very important role in the decision. Thank you, Marvel. Hopefully, Spider Man gets done the way it should be, not the way that Sony wants it to be, because that will turn into garbage. Marvel needs to be allowed to do Spider Man as Marvel sees fit. Uh, they're doing Spider-Man 2099, so Spider-Man in the future. Which, you know, is not necessarily a new thing, because no. they've, done, they, they, they've done this with multiple different superheroes. Yeah, um, they're doing Daredevil, which is titles, titled The Devil's Apprentice. Gambit will be appearing as Daredevil's assistant. That kind of intrigues me. I, I'm excited for that one. It, it, it's they take comic books and twist it, but they're twisting it perfectly. It's just you know, Gambit is you know, bit of a, a ninja already, and they go off and put him in you know, uh, together with a blind you know, a blind ninja, pretty much. Yeah, you know, uh, it's, gonna, it's gonna be unique. Um, the other news in the universe out there is Channing Tatum is. Trying to take this, the role of Gambit very seriously. He announced that he understands how serious Gambit really is and how people actually relate to Gambit. And he's doing a lot of work to practice everything that involves with it. Which is pretty good because, honestly, at this point, it, it's... It really feels like Chan Tatum is the only person who's really taking I, I the Gambit movie serious. The, the actor, the other actors are not. The directors are not. It's you know, I, it honestly feels like you know they <coughs> went off and just announced who the director was to try to keep Chan Tatum from walking away from it. Yeah, it, it, it's I don't know. It, it, it has its potential of stupidity. It's really, you know, I mean, this thing may end up you know in in you know movie limbo, much like. Uh, the Predator remake they yeah. were supposed to do with Dwayne the Rock Johnson a few years ago. Yeah, no, it's there's a few in that. Um, so they are doing 
Guardians of the Galaxy and Star Lord, which are both you know based on the same. It's very unique to see. I, I guess the movie really took off. Well, it really opened up the door. Now, I mean, honestly, if you you look at the movie as opposed to the comics, a lot of the stories are are much different. For instance, you know, I mean, the whoever's going to be into being Star Lord's dad is not going to be the the star the father that. Um, he has in the comic series who turns out to be this pompous jerk president who just wants, you know, you know, once he discovers his son's alive, he just wants to keep him under <coughs> his thumb, you know, and try to mold him into becoming his heir. Yeah, no, definitely going to be unique. Um, for those fans who have heard, uh, who grew up watching it, they are bringing a Howard the Duck comic book Howard again, Duck. which is uh, I think this is you know this goes back to you know how you know George Lucas was you know sold all of his movie properties you know to you know, Disney and so because Disney owns Marvel they now have access to Howard the Duck and yeah they, see I, I hope this in the future though brings in a new Howard the Duck movie. Howard the Duck was amazing, phenomenal, and I enjoyed watching it every time. You know what? It was, honestly, it was, you know, I thought it was a really good movie. I know it really didn't do that well, which is unfortunate because... People are picky. People are, are definitely picky, you know, but I happen, you know, to have enjoyed it. Uh, another movie that I really loved you know, was Willow. Willow was good. Willow was good. So I'm wondering if somewhere down the line, now that they have the creative pro- license for it, the, whether Marvel will somehow find a way to uh, incorporate Willow. It would be unique. You know, they're definitely doing some good. It's good to see. Um, they're doing Nova, which is also tied in with Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, Nova has been a regular. Uh, they're doing Drax, which is written by CM Punk. Which is, uh, I've been hearing about this for a while. The punk's really been trying to uh, get involved uh, with uh, a comic book series. It, this is not new for him. Punk has written for a comic book series yeah. in the past. See, I, I'm happy to see it because this gives more material for us to actually read. So it's not just the same basic things anymore. Oh yeah, it, it's more familiarity. And you'll, I actually like it when you know people that are. Outside of the so-called genre come in. Uh, I remember uh, Kevin Smith doing a series on the Green Arrow. And I'm not a fan, really, of the Green Arrow comics. But I loved what Kevin Smith did with the character and how he actually... uh, He came in to bring back Oliver Queen because Oliver Queen had been killed. Kevin Smith has become quite... uh inspiration as of lately. Well, no kidding. I mean, he, I, he, he went off and he lost a drastic amount of weight. And who knows how long he's been working on this because every time he's ever been seen on TV, he's always been wearing, you know... His a, iconic hockey jersey. His hockey jersey for Smodcast. His Smodcast hockey jersey. So you can't really tell because you could tell that he was floating in it, but, you, you know, because it was a huge jersey, but you never knew exactly, you know... You know how much, how big he was underneath it. So see, I saw pictures of him today, and he looked absolutely incredible. Yeah, he lost eighty five pounds. He finally cut out sugar, so it shows how important cutting out different things are. Absolutely. Uh, he he he's honestly one of our inspirations. We've listened to a few of his podcasts from time to time. You know what? I just I love uh, Kevin Smith. I think I think he has. For the genre that we love so much, he's a genius. Yes. He really is. And I, I would love for you know him to somehow be able to come in and to do something comic book related. And no, I'm not talking about you know the the comic books that you know for uh, Silent Bob and Jay. <coughs> I would read those. I would definitely read those. But yes, I, I would love to see Kevin Smith make a jump into comic world. Be unique to see. Oh, absolutely. Um, they're doing a Venom Space Knight. Um, Which is probably going to be Flash Thompson. This more than likely. Uh, version of... They uh, didn't They didn't talk about it way too much, so I'm not entirely sure. Well, um, I've read some of the new Guardians.